I'm in Mariupol, a steelworking city on the Sea of Azov. In 2014, Russian forces crossed the border and stopped about 15 miles away. And they're still there, dug in, facing Ukrainian forces that are also dug in, and amongst civilians who are trying to live amid that war of attrition. If Vladimir Putin orders a renewed invasion, this city is quite likely to be in the firing line. I'm going to go and have a look at not only how the soldiers are surviving, but also the civilians who've been living on that front line for the past eight years. We travelled east, crossing checkpoints to where there was evidence of fighting from the past. I met up with a marine unit who was taken to their front lines in the ruined town of Shirokina. 25-year-old Alexander was busy making a traditional borscht for his unit. He sat down and we talked about life for the fighters and how strange it was to be fighting another war in Europe. I was last here about seven and a half years ago, which was when the war first arrived here. Back then there were still civilians hanging around, hanging on for a ceasefire, hoping everything would go away, they could get on with their lives. I mean, eight years later, the whole place is destroyed. There isn't a single civilian left. It's just a wreck. Before the war, Berdyansk was a pleasant holiday town on the coast. At their home shared with three generations, Dmitry chopped wood as his mother Ludmilla told me about their life. Everywhere there are shattered remains of past fighting. A bombed church stands as a reminder that nothing has escaped the war here. We came across a ruined school building near the coast. I entered, walking over rubble and broken glass. We just found basically what this is all about. It's a great symbol. Um, these are the Viking nobles who, legend has it, founded Kiev. Um, and if you read Vladimir Putin's own essay on the Kremlin website, that's what this whole conflict is about. Who has the right to claim that heritage, Kiev or Moscow? In Grinitnoya, further north, the school is almost empty due to COVID restrictions, except for a few pupils rehearsing for a show. Design and technology teacher Sveta Sanjarovskaya sits in an empty room teaching her class online. Larissa Ajunova, who teaches English, tells me how the indiscriminate bombing has affected her life. I think for several times we had we had shouting and how to say abstrali. The shell. Shout, yeah. It was the 26th of October, I come back home and I saw that on my street, not far from my house, I think 50 meters from my house, it was um, Varonka. Mm, a crater. A crater, yeah. Back at the front line, I made my way through the trenches, thick with mud, to the Marines' forward observation post. Using a periscope, I looked out towards enemy lines. The troops here are very young. Можно спросить, сколько вам лет? 27. 27. 21. А сколько вам лет когда война начиналась? Когда подписал контракт? Не, не, когда когда война в Донбассе начиналась в 14. 14. Гляди, 14. Конечно, да. Вы сможете в тот момент 
представить, что вы будете через 8 лет стоять? Нет, конечно. вообще не представляю. Ага. All of those well-worn metaphors about the First World War and the Western Front apply very strongly. Um, but you know, all of the tension, a lot of the rhetoric is coming out of capital cities. A shell came over about a week ago, but mostly the guys are doing what they've been doing for the past eight years, which is sitting and waiting. <laughs>